hopefully all of you are doing well. Today in this video, I partnered up with Pay Salsa to bring you an early back to school recipe. And that's my shredded beef and cheese baked potato. Now I'm going to cook the beef in the slow cooker, which of course always lends itself well to the cooking process when you don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen. Let's get into the recipe. So we're going to start by gathering up the ingredients that's going to go in the slow cooker with the beef. We have some sliced garlic, sliced onions, some sliced green bell pepper, a little bit of flour, some beef stock, an array of seasonings that consist of some Grand Diamond all-purpose seasoning, of course, some chipotle powder, Mexican oregano, thyme, salt, and pepper. And of course, we have our paste salsa, which can be found at your local Walmart. For the exact measurements to this recipe, be sure and check out gdseasoning.com. The link will be in the description below the video. Next, I'm just gonna season up my beef. I have a pot roast cut of beef, which has a good marbling of fat and it's going to cook really well in the slow cooker and get nice and tender. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of flour and spread that all over the pot roast. That way when we brown it in the skillet, it'll get nice and crusty on the outside. While I was seasoning up the beef, I preheated a large skillet over medium high heat with about three or four tablespoons of olive oil. That way it will be ready to go so I can brown my pot roast on each side for about five or six minutes. Browning meats first before they go into the slow cooker really adds another layer of flavoring that you wouldn't normally get if you skip this step. Our slow cooker is already ready to go with half of the peppers, onions, and garlic, and then we're gonna place the pot roast in, and then the other half of the veggies. Now we're gonna pour in about a cup and a half of our paste salsa. Since the paste chunky salsa already has a great base of tomatoes and other vegetables, we're going to get more flavor bang for our buck instead of just using a plain tomato sauce. This is also going to help us save some time since we're trying to get back into the swing of things when school begins. Lastly, I'm just gonna pour in my beef stock and we're gonna cook it on low for eight to nine hours or on high for four to five hours. About an hour and a half before you plan to serve, find yourself some large russet potatoes, wash them up and scrub them really well, pat them dry, and then rub them down with some olive oil and give them a good sprinkling of kosher salt or sea salt if you like. We're gonna bake the potatoes at 425 degrees for about 45 minutes to an hour. Meanwhile, you can prepare your favorite toppings for baked potatoes. I'm chopping up some chives, a little fresh parsley, I have sour cream and guacamole, cheese of course, and I even added some bacon. <laughs> Since I decided to also use some paste salsa as a topping, on those times that I feel like being a little extra, I add some cilantro, some red onion, and some jalapenos, and just stir that in. Our toppings are all set and ready to go. Let's check on our pot roast in the slow cooker and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's tender, it's ready. All you have to do now is take it out and put it on a plate. It'll be easier for you to shred with two forks. Once you're done shredding the beef, be sure and put it back into the slow cooker so it can absorb all of those juices again and everybody can help themselves. Now here comes the fun part. We're gonna take one of our baked potatoes, slice it down the middle and pop it open. And then we're gonna follow with some of that shredded pot roast and some of the juices from the pot with all the onions and the peppers and the garlic. And we're gonna follow with some cheese, maybe a little bacon, or any of the other toppings that you feel like you wanna finish off your baked potato with, including some paste chunky salsa. I wanna thank Paste Salsa for sponsoring this video. And as always, I wanna thank you guys for coming and cooking with me and hanging out. You know I appreciate it. Don't forget this recipe and others can be found at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you guys next time.